Um, so the article I'm presenting today is postal postal corner injuries. Can stress radiography of the knee help characterise PLC injuries? Um, it's an article that was published this month in the Journal of Clinical Orthopaedics and Related Research. Um, the authors were from the Department of Orthopaedics in the University of Virginia Health System in the United States. They had no conflicts that they declared. Um, I'll skip through the anatomy slides that I've just put in there more for myself and for Mark's benefit. Um, that's a blank slide. Just Move it on for a second. Always good to have a look at this. <laughs> so just uh, talking through what I had in the earlier slide, three layers of the... Um, yeah. Three layers of the uh, postural lateral corner. I've just got to go back. The outer layer being um, exposed predominantly of the iliotibial band, um, the lateral patella retinaculum and the biceps femoris muscle. Um, middle layer being fibula collateral ligament and, um, between the lateral epicondyle of the femur and the head of the fibula. And the deep layer being the capsule and the fibrous tissue, the popliteus muscle and the um, attaches to the lateral condyle of the femur and the posterior aspect of the lateral meniscus. Um, and there's also some ligament thickening of the capsule, which is a thickening of the capsule. So that's the deep layer that you can see predominantly there in that picture. The other picture didn't uh, project at all on the previous slide. Uh, in terms of how the, uh, you injure your posterior lateral corner, it's usually a knee hyperextension with various stress, uh, commonly associated with ACL or PCL injury and traumatic injuries, and it causes rotatory instability of the knee. It's relevant because it affects the sturdiness and effectiveness of either an ACL or PCL reconstruction. Um, and postural lateral corner injuries is an injury to either to one or any more of any of the structures in the postural lateral corner, uh, namely the iliotibial band, the biceps femoris tendon, the lateral collat uh, collateral ligament or popliteus, the arcuate ligament complex, not complex, and the lateral meniscus. Um, the aim of the study was to correlate stress uh, radiograph findings with MRI findings to be able to compare various stress openings in patients who have had postural lateral corner repair versus those um, who were treated non-operatively. Apologies for the typos. And the third aim was to determine whether stress radiographs can supplement MRIs in terms of surgical decision making. Um, the study design was a retrospective study Patients were identified in two ways. Um, searching a radiology database that the, um, the authors had access to. The first way that they found the patients was looking through for MRI reports with either edema, sprain, tear, increased signal intensity, or abnormal appearance of the fibular collateral ligament or <coughs> structures in the postural lateral corner. Um, of those patients with these findings, they then identified a subset who also had various stress radiographs um, available to be seen, which was and they were using the study. They then went on to try to find a second group of patients um, where they looked for stress radiographs alone and then tried to find those patients who had available MRIs from outside centres. So those, all those patients were lumped together for this study. In terms of the technique for producing a stress um, a very stress x-ray. Um, an AP x-ray of the knee was taken with the knee flexed 30 degrees. Um, they described physician applied stress. There was no comment as to how much force was used for the stress. Um, and then the subsequent x-rays were independently measured by the two, two of the authors measuring the absolute lateral compartment opening. Um, the measurement was the perpendicular distance between the subchondral bone at the most distal point of the lateral femoral, co femoral condyle and the corresponding point on the lateral tibial plateau. Um, the two authors' measurements were averaged and had a fairly, um, fairly good correlation in terms of how accurate they were between each other. So on the left is the normal x-ray and on the right is the vera stress x-ray with the yellow line. Uh, demarcating the most distal point of the femoral condyle there, and then the corresponding point on the tibial plateau. 
Um, in terms of their subjects, they managed to find 27 separate knee ligament, uh, se uh, separate patients with knees with posterior lateral corner injuries. Um, I believe there were about there were less than 27 patients, however, because at least two of them had bilateral injuries. Um, 14 were identified via the first method, where they identified patients with an MRI, then found their x-rays. And then 13 were found via the second method, where they found stress x-rays and then tracked down outside MRIs. Um, 16 of the 27 were categorised as partial injuries on MRI, whereas 11 of the 27 were categorised as complete um, injuries of the posterior lateral um, of the structure in the postural corner on MRI. All the 27 patients had another ligament injured outside of the postural corner, so either a, a ACL or PCL injury. Um, in terms of, not to go through all of them, but uh, seven of the 27 had a high grade injury of the uh, anterior cruciate ligament. Eight had an, a high grade injury of the ACL and the PCL. And 10 of the 27 had high grade injuries in all four major ligaments. Um, in the study, they then went on to describe their indications for surgery being compromised knee stability, um, secondary to, the to a high grade cruciate injury. And their diagnosis for this was made firstly on physical examination and then MRI. They then went to describe that, that, um, their criteria for performing posterior lateral corner reconstruction and their criteria was dependent upon physical examination, MRI, the stress x-ray, as well as then looking at either the examination under anaesthetic, looking for various laxity, or if there was an arthroscopy formed, positive lateral compartment drive-through sign. Um, a subset of the patients went on to surgery, I think. Uh, I don't have the uh, absolute number written down. Um, and non-operative management was described for three patients with four, in, with four knee injuries in between them all. Uh, three of the patients were, um, one of them was medically unfit for management and he, he had bilateral knee injuries. Uh, one was lost to follow up and one was elected to treat non-operatively uh, in a brace. In terms of the, looking through the results of the study, they described that the average vera stress opening measurement was 15 or 0.1 millimetres with a um, range of 5.6 millimetres plus or minus. Average measurements for those who were categorised as partial injuries was 12.8 millimetres plus or minus 2.4. And there were, they noted that there was no statistical difference between patients with a chronic um, partial injury of the, pos of the postlateral corner versus an acute. Um, average measurement for complete injuries, m not surprisingly, showed an increase measurement of 18.6 plus or minus 1.8 and again no difference between acute and chronic injuries. Um, those patients that had ACL and PCL, uh, purely an ACL injury with posterior lateral corner um, injury averaged 12.9 millimetres plus or minus 3 and those with an ACL as well as PCL injury averaged higher with 16.4 millimetres as a measurement. Um, in terms of the patients that they performed a um, operative repair, they measured the average of the varus stress being 16.5 millimetres and a varus opening in non-operative cases was lower in terms of 11 millimetres. Of their patients, they stabilised 18 cases and um, I thought it was interesting to note that um, one of the cases that was not repaired was had a contralateral x-ray which showed two and a half millimetres difference between the uninjured side versus the injured side. Going through the weaknesses of the study, um, the study design was retrospective rather than a prospective study. They don't mention having any consistent um, radiographic protocol. There's no mention of how much stress was placed for each individual patient. And there's no consistent uh, standard to compare each x-ray to a, a normal or a, um, the other, another side. Um, they also note that there's variation in the MRI sources. Half the patients had their MRI at that health centre 
whereas half of the patients in the study had MRIs from outside centres. They had a fairly small sample size, and they're unable to give a, a, a due to the small power, they're unable to give a figure for what would what absolute number as a measurement they would consider as stable or unstable. Take home messages I think would be that um, looking through the study they mentioned quite strongly that MRI can miss posterolateral corner injuries as is evidenced by the fact that a fair amount of the partial injuries were repaired. Um, the stress radiography measurements here seem to cor correlate to the degree of injury on the MRI and um, just from that one patient that was not operated on I thought comparison to the unaffected side may be helpful. I think that's uh, all I've got. Thank you, Jeremy.